this is going to be another fun Cricut project and I pulled out some things that I'll be using. I've got some gray paint. I've got this regular, this is the stain that I always use, the Jacobean. And I've got a flathead screwdriver and a staple gun. Also have some thick paper down because I know the stain is going to get really greasy and it's going to soak through onto the other side. So I have some few layers of some really thick paper here. And then I have a canvas board, it's just a stretched canvas. Um, and on the back there it's a put together here with staples. Um, and I'm going to use this flathead screwdriver to pop the staples out. Now I heard about somebody um, doing a, a craft where they disassembled the canvas. And I haven't tried one of these before, but I know that these staples are thick and easy to remove. So I'm just going to go around and pop, pop these off. You can sort of dig into the wood a little bit. The wood is soft, so it lets you sort of dig in a little bit if they are really tight. And it'll let you get up underneath them and just pop them up. If you need to, you can get them halfway up. Come back later with um, some needle nose pliers and just grab them and, and get the rest of them out so that you don't worry about... Um, maybe possibly leaving a part of the staple in there because that could happen and you just you don't want it in there and you're afraid you might not get the whole thing out then just just get them halfway up and use pliers to get them out so I'm gonna go around and get all of these loosened and then pull them out with the pliers yeah I just went around and loosened all of them they're all just sort of sticking up about halfway and some of them you can tell just one side is sticking up because sometimes it just don't pop out that cleanly and it's okay that the wood is a little torn up underneath that's fine because you won't be using this side anyways but now I can just go around get a good grip with these pliers and just pull all of them out just put them in a pile somewhere so you don't lose any of them and that way they don't fall on the floor and nobody will step on them and then throw them all out we won't be using these again so I took all the staples out and then if you just unfold the canvas part that's wrapped around you have what's left and that's this nice little wood frame that's inside and it's thick and the one side is all torn up of course but the other side is in pretty good shape. It's a really thin wood, it's a soft wood, it's almost like balsa wood and it's attached here with some little staples, some kind of metal pieces in there so you know don't be too rough with it, but it's sturdy enough to handle. Um, so I want to stain this, and um, I also want to use this, so don't throw this away. This is a good piece of canvas that I want to use, but it's going to be painted. So I'll be using this part, not the underside of it, not the yellowy you know, back part of it, but I'll be using this, this part right here. So if you wanted to, you could take a pencil and sort of mark the area that you're going to be using and not on the inside because you're going to need to staple it so you're going to mark on the outside so you can just go right along the edge here with the pencil and uh, show yourself where you're going to need to cut it maybe a little bit smaller when you go to cut it that way it doesn't hang over the edge but that's that's about where we're going to be working right in there you can still kind of see where it's folded because it's been wrapped around that wood for so long it kind of had a crease there so it's about where it's creased so it's easy to see and we will um, set that aside. I put some vinyl gloves on because I want to be working with the stain and I know that the stuff can get all over your skin. It's not very nice to get out so just use that same tool that we were using to take the staples out and use that to you know, pop open your little can of stain. And I don't have a brush this time to apply it because um, when I'm doing a board or something like that, a bigger surface, you know, I'll use a brush. But this is so small, I don't need to get out a brush to, to do something like this. I'm just going to use um, the gloved hand and a paper towel, and I'll just sort of rub it on this. I get a really thin coat because I don't have forever for this to, to dry, so I want to make sure I don't have a whole bunch of stain uh, just sitting there on the wood soaking in. So I'm just going to get a little bit on the paper towel and just start rubbing it in like this. This sort of dries it as I go since I'm using a paper towel. So I'm going to go all the way around. I'm not going to do the back, but I am going to do the top part and then the, the two sides. So I'll do three angles of this. Remember that this stuff smells really strong no matter what kind you get. So if you want to try to do this quickly or do this uh, somewhere outside, you can have a fan on, have a door open, window open, something like that. So you have some ventilation. So you don't want to be breathing this forever. This is such a small piece that 
you know, maybe you don't have to worry so much about something like this, but while you're letting it dry and after you've finished it, you definitely want to let it sit somewhere where you're not going to be breathing it in. And I just go around with that same paper towel, but I use the dry part and I just kind of soak up any extra stain that might be on there. That way it dries a little faster and if I go to handle it without gloves, I might not get it all over me. Okay, so there it is. The back, we're not going to worry about. That's going to go down like this anyways, and it's going to get stapled onto the canvas piece that we took out. So let's get that situated. Now I'm just going to cut along the, uh, the lines that we marked earlier. Kind of follow along those. And just remember which side is your up and which side is your down for the canvas. Kind of weird to see it all flattened out like this. You don't usually get to see that. But what we're just making here is just a floppy piece of paper. They do make canvas paper as well, but it can tear. It has the same texture for painting on, but it is paper, so it can tear. So it's better to use the piece that it comes with, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's still intact. If you want, you can bring the frame back over. Just make sure you didn't cut it too small anywhere. It looks like this one's pretty good. So I have some gray paint. I'm going to paint this whole background gray. And... Um, I have a couple different shades in there. I couldn't decide if I wanted the lighter one or the darker one, so I put them both in there at the same time, and I'll just mix them, and then give this whole thing just a one coat with gray. Gray usually covers really well, really easily, so I just give it a coat with gray. Kind of weird, again, to paint on just a floppy piece of canvas paper. And of course, as always, have some extra paint that didn't get used. This gray was mixed up anyways. You can kind of tell by seeing that it's got some different shades here in the top. So I'm just going to gather it all up on my brush and put it back in the bottle because I don't want to waste any of this. Just a little bit in there, that's fine, but this is too much to waste. And I'm going to set this canvas piece of paper aside and let it dry. It's a really thin coat, so it won't take long at all. And then I'm going to get out the Cricut Maker and we're going to line up the words that are going to go on this piece of gray that we just painted. So I'll just kind of shimmy it onto my hands carefully so I don't get fingerprints on it and set it aside. I kind of want to show what I'm working with before I go into the app and uh, explain what I'm about to do with this little small piece of vinyl that I have because sometimes you don't have a full 12 by 12 piece of vinyl to work with. Sometimes you're working with your little scrappy pieces and that's fine. You can save these and people will tell you save them and use them on a project. But then you'll go to print something and you'll, uh, you'll find that, well, it's going to automatically set up to save the most amount of paper and the machine is automatically going to think you're using a full size piece of paper because it's just preset to think that you're using a 12 by 12. And so that's nice and all, if that's what you have, but if you don't have that, you need to tell it that you're working with smaller paper so that it can work with the piece you have, so you don't have to waste this. So I've got it stuck on there. I think I stuck it pretty good. Well, let's just get it uh, fed into the machine, and then we're going to go to my app, and we're going to set up the words that are going to go inside this frame. So let's go into the Cricut Design app. And under the My Projects tab right here, look for the one we're going to be using, which is going to be this one right here. So you can click on Make It. It's already ready. It's already a good enough size to work within the space that we have. Uh, so let us click on this top part up here where it says Matte 12 inch by 12 inch. We're going to click on those green letters. And then underneath, um, it says 12 inch by 12 inch again in green. We're going to click on that because it thinks we're using 12 by 12, but we're going to tell it we're using something different. We'll pick the smallest one that we can use here because this is the closest to what I'm working with. I'm working with something like a six and a half by eight. So we'll go with six by six. We don't want it to be, uh, think it's too big because then it's going to work it into the space and it's going to figure out the best way to do this. So we'll have to cut it, of course. It's not ready to go just like that. We're going to have to separate the words and we're going to have to put the Alexa part where we want it and then the do the laundry part somewhere else if I want it to be, you know, uh, right, uh, right aligned or whatever I want to do with it. So it's ready. We can click off. It's showing us what it's going to look like when it prints and then we can click continue. Make sure we're connected to the machine. The blue light is on so I know we're connected. 
and then it's going to bring us to the page where we can select that we're working with vinyl and it's important that you know that that you're not using paper because if you select paper it's going to cut through both layers it's going to cut through the vinyl on the top and it's also going to cut through the wax paper on the bottom which you don't want it to do because it becomes a bigger pain in the butt so it's ready to go and i can press the cut button on the machine and let's get this started buttons flashing over here is telling me go ahead and press because it's ready to go so i'll press that Press the flashing feeder button to get this out and see if it cut it the way we wanted it to. You can kind of see it if I tilt it around so the light will hit it just right. Yep, and it looks like it's on there pretty good. So now we have to do the tricky part and um, it looks like we can even save the bottom half here, which we didn't end up using this part. So we'll just cut it right along there and we'll be able to use most of this. So let's get all of that figured out. So now I'll just go and kind of pull back the the card that it's sitting on, the, the board, and get that started. All right, so of course it is sticky underneath, but because the wax paper is still on the back, we're able to handle it, and we can cut this in half to save that bottom part right there. And I might even um, try to just go along the words here because I don't need this whole piece. You only need to take the words out and... The rest is just the wasted piece that you'd otherwise throw away. So we're going to save this piece and we'll just put it right back on the roll. I keep them with a rubber band around them so that way, you know, I have, have all my little pieces saved. So let's get this mat down so we have a solid surface to work on. And we'll just work on peeling away the outer part of this, which, you know, sadly gets thrown out. So we can't use the whole thing, but you can fold the corner to get it started and then just peel it away. Helps to have a little bit of a fingernail. Now when you get around the small, small layers, you wanna be really, really careful. You just have to peel it up very slowly. And if you see that you're pulling up something that shouldn't be pulled up, just stick it right back down. And then you might need a hand kind of helping you along with some of this, or just cut it away and kind of take pieces off as you go. And I might even do that because this, uh small letters are even going to go on the bottom so i will cut away the part that says do the laundry right there and i'm just going to work on the part that says alexa on the top because that would be too much to worry about all of that at once i know i would probably mess it up if you stick down this outline piece that you're trying to get rid of if you accidentally stick it down it grabs part of a letter and pulls it up you've got a big mess and you can't really stick it back down or figure out how it goes nice and straight you'll probably end up getting a wrinkle somewhere and it won't look very good so if you have a hand, if someone can help you, right now might be a good time to just stop and cut away this extra piece that you're holding onto so that you can just start with a fresh piece and you don't have to hold all of this. All right, there is a little comma in there too, so I'm trying to get all of this all at once. And I did. All right, this is trash. And then you can go and pull the insides out of your A. You can use a little needle, a little some kind of a sharp tool to do that if you need to if they're really small, but I can just sort of bend the paper and it pops right off and I can get a hold of it. If it's giving you trouble, just use like a back of a safety pin or something. Okay, there's the word Alexa with the comma. And I'm going to be reusing an old piece of contact paper. I just have my rubber band on there. So this um the contact paper can be used over and over as long as you you know, careful with it. You don't let any dust or anything get on it. So I have this piece that I had used earlier today. And I just put the, as best as I could, I put the plastic back on there so that I would be able to, or the paper on the back, I should say. So let's just peel the whole thing up. Let's grab a hold of the letters that say Alexa by laying it right on top. It does help to have someone else helping with this part as well. And it right on here so that we don't get anything picking up onto our onto our paper. So I just use my nail to kind of grab all these little edges to make sure that I mostly have a good grip when I go to peel it off. And this is where we're about to bring back um, the piece of canvas that we took out of the frame and then paint it because we're going to be transferring this onto the gray side. And then of course we'll take our staple gun and attach it to the back. 
I think I got this on there pretty good. So let's set that aside and let's bring back our piece of cake. Well, even though I did this several minutes ago, I still wanted to make sure it was extra dry. So I hit it real quick with the blow dryer and just to make sure that, uh, no, nothing's going to get messed up when I go. That's going to look really cool when I go to put my, uh, my letters on there. So let's set that aside and let's get... Let's sort of fill this up, make sure we've got everything. So it's got to come off on the transfer paper in order for this to work. Alright, we're seeing the backwards view. It looks a little weird. Alright, try to have clean hands when you do this so you don't get anything any fuzzies or anything on there. Those little small pieces can be a pain for you. Because these letters, they're not one solid piece. If this was a PNG image, they would be one solid piece. So it would be a little easier to peel them off of this uh, onto the transfer paper. But the difference is, on this one, we're using um, a font that was uh, one of the free fonts that's available in the the uh, Cricut design app. So on your canvas that you're given, it's what it's called in there, the canvas, um, you're given this as an option. So they are individual letters that are not connected. They look like they are, but there's little places, little points in here where they have a little break because it's not completely touching. So that's just how the fonts work in the program. Okay, let's see how we want this to look. If our frame is on there, we want Alexa kind of on the top maybe sort of in the center somewhere and then down at the bottom right uh, right aligned but in the bottom corner it'll say do the laundry so let's stick alexa down right here right like that seems pretty straight now the idea is we are sticking down the letters not supposed to be peeling up anything else just the backing paper Okay, and it really looks nice to put um, white on this dark gray color. So I didn't want to do it on black. I thought it would have looked like a little chalkboard, but just wanted something a little different, maybe a little lighter, something easier to look at. Very cool. And for this other piece, I'm going to use just a small one. So let's cut a piece that's just as big as we need it to be. You can kind of have some pieces that are already cut to size for this, so you can use them for different things. If there's a common size word or image you like to use, maybe just have it pre-cut that way and you can reuse it a few times. So here's our backing on this one. We're gonna do the same thing. Get the transfer paper going. These are really thin letters, so you wanna be very, very careful. And just make sure that you don't get too carried away. Make sure you're Spelling it out as you go to make sure you have all the letters. If something looks weird, you're forgetting something, leaving it behind. Just start over, back up, pull it away, and make sure you get all of these. Get a little bit of this contact paper, transfer paper, whatever you call it. All right, I just always fold the corner, and that's an easy way to get it to, to uh, come off. Okay. Do the laundry. I'm gonna rub over them with my thumbnail again. Make sure they're on there really well. All right, bring this back. Gotta see what we're looking like. Think, do the laundry right down there. Yeah. All right, it's looking good. Okay, I have this piece of canvas with the words flipped over on the ugly side of our frame that we didn't bother with uh, staining because we knew that it had some holes in it and it was going to get covered up anyways. So let's just line it up just like that. Let's go around and it has helped to have a friend holding the other side. That way you know that you're pulling it nice and tight. And you don't want it to be floppy. All right, let's just stretch it across. Just like that. Let's do our other sides, kind of keeping it even, make sure we're not doing it unbalanced or anything. So let's pull this nice and tight, do one right here, 
got a lot of surface area to work with, so I don't have to worry too much about um, now slipping off of the piece of wood. Okay. And this will also sturdy your frame as well. I don't really know how many you're going to need. I doubt we're going to need as many as we started with. I don't really want to put one right here on the corner, though, because remember, it's got its own little staples in there, so I'll get close to the corner, but I'm going to avoid that little corner piece because I don't want to mess with what they had going on originally. But I'll do, you know, one here and then one there. So my corner pieces will look like, like that. All right. There it is. Oh, very cool. So, you know, you can do different sayings on this. It'll look like a chalkboard. It kind of looks like you, you know, wrote on it if you had really nice handwriting. And um, you can make this have different messages on there. This can kind of lean somewhere on a shelf. It can sit on the wall. You can put one of those little picture holders on the back, little picture frame holders with the little uh, metal teeth that grab onto the wood uh, or the, the nail, I mean to say. Um, so you can hang these up. But... This one's really simple. You could put some maybe little flowers or something on there. Maybe put instead of the little teeth hanger on the back, you can just put a, a nice little piece of twine or something that you want to show. And you can even put that on there with the staple gun. So you have a little something that kind of goes with the rustic theme, kind of a farmhouse look. But, you know, try this with different background colors. You can make it for a kid's room and you can make it whatever color they want. Use, the, use this uh, white vinyl to do their name or whatever you want on there a nice little you know motivational saying or something like that but i think these are really cute and super trendy right now so i want to try something with the alexa skill on there but anyway super easy and you don't have to build your own wooden frame to go around it you just use the inside of a canvas and then just kind of do it inside out instead of keeping it inside the canvas you're bringing it to the outside and working with it because it's a cool little extra piece that you can add onto your paintings